and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, whose Son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross, drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in the joy and sorrow, we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And to be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Praise you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And his father and his mother marvelled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're halfway through Lent, and it's Mothering Sunday. For hundreds of years, this has been a day of a refreshing break from the fasting of the penitential season. Many people went back to the church where they were baptized, where they became a member of the body of Christ on this day, or perhaps they visited the mother church of their diocese, the cathedral. The servants who were living away in other people's houses were often given the day off so they could make this visit. Nowadays, thanks to florists and greeting card companies, we often associate it with the mothers of our own families. And that's a lovely thing to celebrate, of course, but it's not the original meaning of the feast. It's the church, the mother of us all, that we give thanks for today. Now, do you remember Mothering Sunday last year in 2020? I do vividly. It was the first day that our church was closed for public worship. 
the Prime Minister had warned us not to visit our elderly relatives and everybody was encouraged by that time just to stay at home and hunker down. So we streamed a small service from the side chapel with just the clergy and a couple of people as film crew so people could watch online at home. And we thought at the time that the worst that might happen is that we'd face a period of 10 to 14 weeks of lockdown. That's what I recorded in my diary at the time. It seemed an immensely long time to wait. Well, we all know how that turned out. Now we are facing an even longer time between now and the final lifting of restrictions. But over the year, we've got used to coping with the pandemic and the limitations that it brings. Many of us are looking forward to being back in church, perhaps today on Mothering Sunday. But many other people are still shielding. Many churches are not yet ready to open. We all have to dig deep and find a little more patience for a little while longer. Now, our gospel reading today tells us about the time when Mary and Joseph took their baby to their mother church, if you like, the temple in Jerusalem. It's the place where people gathered for all the important feasts of the Jewish year and where new parents brought their babies to present them to the Lord and give thanks to him for their new life. And when Jesus was taken by his parents to the temple, the old man Simeon blessed them, predicted Jesus' destiny, and then warned his mother that parenting this very special child would bring her suffering. It can't have been easy to hear those words. A sword will pierce your own soul too. But anyone who has ever deeply loved another person, whether it's a child or a parent or a partner or a very dear friend, knows what fear is. We fear something harming our loved one. We fear losing them. Where we love, we take the risk of loss. Dr. Colin Murray Parks, the founder of the modern hospice movement, said that the pain of grief is just as much part of life as the joy of love. It is perhaps the price we pay for love, the cost of commitment. No one could have been more deeply committed to Jesus than his own mother, and the cost to her of his suffering and death is unimaginable. Jesus, who is loved so much by his own mother, shares with each of us the love he received from his earthly parents and from his heavenly father. He pours out on us the motherly love of God, which was reflected in the love of his mother Mary. In the Middle Ages, several mystical writers spoke of Jesus as laboring on the cross in the pains of childbirth to bring a new creation to life, the church that is his body on earth. Now, as anyone who's been through it knows, labor is rightly named. Most mothers will say it is the hardest work that they have ever done, and yet it is also the most worthwhile. Jesus willingly took on the pains of the cross to bring something new into the world, a community of faith that is united with him through his death and resurrection. Christians belong together in a profound way. As members of Christ's body, we are truly sisters and brothers. We need to see and touch each other as siblings do in a family. It has been incredibly painful to be parted from one another over this past year. Someone asked me the other day what I missed most at church. So many things came to mind. Singing hymns, hugging at the peace, sharing Holy Communion, catching up over coffee, and that joyful mixing of generations. Old people talking with young ones, parents keeping an eye on children, teenagers helping out with the babies. We are not meant to be Christians on our own, alone at home, watching a screen. The church is our mother who gathers us all together. Just as a family is gathered for birthdays and Christmas for days of celebration and times of sadness, 
We need to be with each other. We belong in our church family. And when anyone is missing, the whole body feels the loss. Now, people sometimes have the odd idea that you have to be good to go to church and to call yourself a member of Christ's family. They couldn't be more wrong. Christ labored to bring to birth a family where all are gathered in through his grace, his gift, his goodness, and not our own effort or deserving. The American poet Robert Frost once said that home is the place where, when you have to go there, they have to take you in. Now that's true for most people, thankfully, but even if our actual family home is a place where we don't feel welcome, the church is a home that is open to everyone. Mother Church has to take us in because the motherly love of God embraces us all. We are not the hosts. Jesus is. Church isn't a club to which any human being controls access. It is the family of which we are all beloved and valuable members. What will we find when at last we are able to come home in person to our church family. St. Paul describes what belonging to Mother Church is like. It's a community of mutual compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. It's a place where we are constantly forgiving each other. It's a family where love, peace, and thankfulness reign. And like so much in Christianity, there's a wonderful paradox at its heart. When we dwell in the family of God, the word of Christ dwells in us richly. It's a mutual indwelling. We are so close to the heart of God that we find God living in us and God's love flowing out from us to embrace everyone we meet. I pray that it will not be long before we can once more embrace in person not only our own mums and grannies, but every single member of our local church, the living sign of God's maternal love for us all. Happy Mothering Sunday. Amen. Let's pray for the church and for the world and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, on this Mothering Sunday, we give you thanks for all those who have been responsible for mothering us, for our own parents, for teachers, for priests, for all those who have been positive influences in our lives. We give thanks. We pray that we may take from their example and be inspirations for others. Help us to be mothering figures for those who look up to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. We pray for our Mother Church, for St. Paul's Cathedral. We thank you that it is a focus in this diocese for our big celebrations and we thank you for the resources and the encouragement that they give us we pray for the clergy and laity of saint paul's praying that your blessing will be upon them we pray too for our bishops and for all that they do to mother the churches of this diocese. We pray for the ministries of Sarah and Rob and ask too for your blessing upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. We thank you, Father, for your generous love, for all the signs that you give us of your love and care. 
we pray, especially today, for those who struggle to see love in this world, for those whose lives are difficult, for those whose homes are unsafe, for those whose family lives are complicated. We pray for those for whom Mothering Sunday is a difficult feast to hold. For those who have longed to be parents and have not. For those who have difficult relationships with their parents. For those who feel alone and separated. We pray for your blessing upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We join in prayer for the family of Sarah Everard, who went missing in Clapham last week. We pray for her family and friends and for all those who are involved in that investigation. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. And we pray for all women who feel unsafe. For all those who are even more frightened at this time to go about their day-to-day -day lives. In sorrow, we pray for our country and for the culture that we have built. We pray that you will change our hearts, change our priorities, so that all your people may be safe. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who we know who are in need this day of your comfort and your peace, Lord. We pray for Joanne Brewer, Terry Curry, Jean Watt, Carl Ridley, Kenneth Deacon, Bailey Waters Lawrence, Stuart Morton, Joan Sayers, Carol Spears, Simon Williams, and the family of Michael Duckworth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have departed this world, for those who have died recently and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. We pray especially for Anne Neal, Frederick Foote, Peter Clinic, Joseph Williamson, Amy Turner, Fred Chapman, Daniel Rees, Sarah Perryman, Alfred Field, Lucretia Sari, Muriel Calcott, Charlotte Randall, Richard Brown, Frederick Saunders, and Michael Dan. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We gather these and all of our prayers together, joining them with the prayers of the angels and of the saints. And we ask Mary, our mother, mother of the church, Mother of Christ, to pray for us as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of thy hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, 
we offer to you through him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merit and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion, although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer to you any sacrifice. Yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences, and fill us all who share this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive us, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out and by the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Behold 
the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. We beseech you, O Lord, to pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 